Hey everybody, had to reset the stream momentarily. And who we got? Momentary technical difficulties, but I think we got this. Hello, competitors. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Alright, great. And Dark Menace, I still don't see you on the ninja camera. Do you know how to bring that up? issues with, like, getting my camera. Oh, really? Okay. Oh, well, Nutrafil, I can see you just fine. Always nice and dark where you're at, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Maybe now you're both gaming. <laughs> you're both dark and you're both menacing. Uh, I'm not sure if he's Nutrafilling. Now, what does Nutrafil mean, anyway? Is that a, is that a chemical? That's a white blood cell, right? All right, white blood cells are awesome. Those things really kick butt. One hundred percent. All right, Dark Menace, you can hear us just fine, right? Oh, he's muted right now. Uh, let me take a quick look. We're having a little Wednesday match because of some. Potential schedule conflicts. Also, honestly, I overbooked Friday quite a bit, so it's by necessity anyway. And let me just see one other thing. We got uh, we got the map picks up too. I thought we did. There we go. So, first map, Dragon Scales. Second map, Altitude. Third map, Royal Blood. All very popular, this one. Uh, Nutrafil, did you uh, take a look at the patch announcement stuff at all today? Um, not the recent one. I remember when they announced the changes a couple weeks ago. For, yeah. Like, with their, um, PTR, well, but you know, they acted they like they were pushing them out, then they quickly corrected it and added a PTR, a public test realm thing, in front of the announcement, so... It's just going to the test region now, so we don't have to worry about balance changes or new maps just yet. Hey, maps are interesting, though. It looks like they're going to a 9-map pool for 1v1. And they're switching out almost all of the team maps uh, with previous ones or uh, other ones that are available. Except for one. They were keeping uh, Dark something... Dark Side SE, I think. It's the one with like six gold bases in the middle of the map for 3v3. Mm -hmm. So, future looks bright. And then, uh, Dark Menace, are you on with us? I think you're on mute. I know he wasn't able to get his camera up, but I'm not sure exactly what's happening with the sound right now. <sighs> so, Nutrafil, tell us more about white blood cells. Quickly. Okay, I mean... Oh, I, hi, Bob. I was the... Hey, go on. Hello? Yep, I hear you. Okay. Yeah, so, um... I guess my username kind of came from around 5th grade when I was obsessed with, like, this Curse Kazad immune system video. Mm -hmm. And I kind of just, like, pulled up a bunch of articles and just, like, 
read these little things about the different white blood cells, and I just picked Neutrophil as my favorite, so... It's a cool yeah, name. It's gonna be amazing. Yeah, I'm, uh... I'm O positive, so they're always, af they're always more interested in my, uh... In me donating red blood cells instead. I don't think donating white blood cells is actually a thing. It's either red blood cells or platelets. Okay. Interesting stuff. But uh, I'm. I don't know. We had uh, we had Dark Menace on here a moment ago. I don't know if he's he's still in Discord and he's still in Starcraft Two. I will text him. Let's see what he's up to. Sure. Carbot animations, carbot animations. Okay, apparently he's fixing his camera, so. Okay, that's cool. It'll be a minute. Um, okay. Got any fun anecdotes to share with us, Neutrophil? Um, not really. I mean, I've just been doing schoolwork the past few weeks. Yeah. I've been getting any practice in. Yeah, my daughter is uh, starting on first grade. And my wife teaches fifth grade, so they've been hitting school. I work from home right here. <laughs> I do tech support. So let me think about other stuff. So I don't know. What it, I found it interesting, the whole thing with uh, nine maps for the 1v1 pool. Especially because last end of last month, that's exactly what they did with StarCraft Remastered. So I think... I think maybe having nine maps in the 1v1 pool is kind of going to be a standard RTS thing. I really don't know. Do they keep the same, like, three veto thing? I don't know. Uh, they. I haven't checked out the test realm yet. But, uh, yeah, I know that there's some uh, leagues that have been doing, like, nine maps as choices. So. Yeah, I think... I mean, there, I don't think there's any league that does more than a best of seven for the final match, though. So they'd have to have some stuff uh, in place for switching those around. Yeah, right. the yeah, these one v ones are all from the team liquid map contest. They were going to have this one kind of more creative map called Black Lotus, but they ended up ditching that one. I guess there were too many concerns about it, so they brought in a few other team liquid maps. And yeah, I think, okay, yeah, Dark Menace, I think it's rebooting or something. But it's kind of interesting, I was looking through all the team maps, which people have been begging them to switch those around for a while now. Uh, there's a few maps that they added, like around the time that ESL first kind of took over the map choices, where they added them to the melee maps, the ones you can choose in custom games, but didn't actually put them into the ladder. Reclamation, the 2v2 map that, you know, is currently in there. That was one of them. Oh, and... Oh, yep, yeah, sure. We're getting Matheson in on this, our uh, our chat bot. But, yeah, so one of the... I think, I think the 3v3 map, uh, one of those is one of those leftover team TLMC maps from back when they used to do those that kind of got kind of stuck there in storage, but they're finally using it. And there were a couple of 1v1 maps too, but these are all more recent ones. And then there's actually three team maps that are coming from the Heart of the Swarm era that used to be ladder maps back then, so I'm a little bit curious on that because there's there is some subtle balancing you have to do, especially with the bases. You gotta make sure that there's enough room uh, so that Liberators can't exploit the mineral lines, that kind of thing. So that's honestly got me a little bit more curious than the balance changes, which you know, they haven't really updated since August 31st, but they're probably going to update again. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, yeah. Dark Menace is indeed rebooting his computer. And then, yeah, there were some people throwing around some... There's a bunch of Microsoft documents that leaked somehow or other, and apparently Microsoft's to blame for them, but 
it's from the whole things with them, you know, talking to the Federal Trade Commission about the acquisition of Activision Blizzard, and I know there's some people kind of making, uh, kind of calling attention to the fact that there's a chart where they were pointing out that StarCraft seems like a franchise that would do really well with the uh, Xbox Live, Windows Live streaming stuff, and I mean, yeah, it's interesting, but it's also kind of old news, since they'd brought up the StarCraft stuff before. Right. So, I like to try to keep up with that stuff. It gives me things to blog about. Another thing... Oh! Mm -hmm. Do we have Do we have a guest? Let's see. Yeah. Uh, it's Dark Menace, but he's still muted. Yeah. yeah. Let's see what happens. It's rebooted anyway. Okay, yeah, there we go. And Matheson is saying hello to KJ Freedom. Well, with KJ's unit donations, there will be plenty of action for Matheson to witness. Good luck. It's always cute because, yeah, <laughs> there's always this leftover stuff in the previous games. AI. Anyway, I'm playing around with stuff now that uh, you know my wife and my daughter are both going to bed earlier because of the school stuff. I might be able to get a little bit more streaming in myself, like my own channel. And I'm playing around with just kind of sampling different maps or different game modes. Loading now, yep. Cool. Yeah, we'll see. I want to get some nice gimmicks in there, like a nice little count of where I'm at with the achievements I'm still hunting for, and uh, maybe something where I'm trying out different maps from the different games and expansions, and have it be kind of like the whole, kind of like those streams where people are, you know, you got the guy who's like trying out all these different foods or restaurants or attractions or things. I don't know. I'm trying to find ways to market myself. Not that it's not marketable here. And, as you see, I can fill time. I can definitely fill time. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Neutrophil, I'm have just here. Yeah, go on. Have you, have you been keeping up with the uh, other RTSs that are being announced? I have, and month? it's it's neat how, uh, I mean, there's even some smaller ones that haven't gotten as much uh, commotion, but, yeah, what are they calling the one that got uh, announced last month? That like Scarlet and Cats and uh, Pig are helping with. Was that space zero something? Space, space zero, zero zero. Okay, space. I was zero space. I was thinking space zero. Yeah, I've been keeping up with some of that. I think it's just really cool just how many people from the StarCraft community are getting tapped for these things. No, right. we're still not working. Like, oh, just yeah, yeah, we can. Up, yeah. You know, we can just we can just pretend that your room is even darker than neutrophils, okay? But sooner or later, people are going to get tired of me talking. I'm never going to get tired of it, but I know the audience will. So let's just play a match. And I'm going to invite you to the party again, all right? And I guess, uh, Dark Menace, I, I guess we should probably just quickly go over some of the same stuff we were chatting about. Uh, number one... Are you keeping up at all with the public test realm patch that they just announced today? Uh, it's all right if you just say no. Yeah. Nope. Okay. Number two. Um, you know, I don't think I've co ever covered this with you before, but uh, where'd you get your name, Dark Menace? Uh, I mean, I was like six, seven. I mm -hmm. like. I thought Dark was cool, and I thought okay. Menace was cool, so I put them together. They go together very well. Yes, sir. I do have There's to uh, dark. Hmm? add a story there. When we were okay, playing awesome. this game, Dragon City, uh, back at this, whenever we were that young, um, mm -hmm. we had this dragon, and uh, Dark Menace had named uh, the dragon Dark Menace. So I think okay. that's where he got the name originally. But Yeah, it was yeah, cute. I, I, I got my name kind of... Uh, because I was in, I had to create a new account really quickly. There was this, we were trying to create a clan in Warcraft 3 that we could also use for StarCraft Brood War, and some uh, troll was like posting a clan invite simultaneously from us. Yes. In that, yeah, you couldn't, you couldn't leave for a week if you joined a clan. So I just kind of quickly just threw a name together. I think I was Ice Rain before. So, uh, 
Yeah, just I think Hyper Turtle. I don't know exactly where it came from, but I suspect it was partially inspired by the fact that my friend, uh, you know, who I co-host with, was going by War Bunnies. So I went with a similar thing: Violet Bunny, um, Fast Turtle. I okay. guess. Yeah. And it stuck. So enough about me, though. You guys are going to throw down, and we're going to be doing yeah. it on Dragon Scales. You guys have played each other plenty of times in the past, haven't you? For sure. All right. Anything different this time? Um, probably I don't know not. How much Dark Menace has been practicing, but I haven't. So. Okay, Dark Menace. How much have you been practicing? Uh, I mean, I've still been playing, but not as much as I usually do. Okay, there's your answer. You need only ask. All right, I'm gonna move you guys to different chats, and I am going to get started. Thank you very much. All right, all right. GG. Have fun. All right, Dragon Scales. Nice standard map. We have Protoss versus Zerg with a couple of players who go way back. And in the upper left, we have the pink Zerg. He is Dark Menace. And his opponent is in the lower right. We have ourselves a purple Protoss, and he is called Neutrophil. Now, the tool we usually use for some reason didn't load for me, so. And I didn't want to stall any longer, so we're just going ahead with this. And we have so far fairly straightforward stuff. Wait, no, we don't. No, we don't. We have a forge right off the bat and a probe. <laughs> Wait, what? Okay. Game closed. All right. So, calling for a remake. Matheson doesn't work. What? I didn't know Matheson was competing, but all right. As, I mean, since they haven't scouted each other just yet. <sighs> what is StarCraft without an AI bot? I actually am, uh... Actually, I'm kind of curious, you know? How many other leagues have an AI bot that's, uh, torturing the chat constantly? Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> Technical difficulties? Yep. Nothing unusual here, so I believe we were on Dragon Scales. Let me double check. Dragon Scales, indeed. <laughs> oh man, these guys are these guys are throwing shade at each other for not having the webcam ready. Brutal. <clears throat> Matheson ready? Just waiting for the go ahead here. Type beat. Hey, pudding poppy, yo! 
That's the Mathis I know and love. What are your thoughts on KJ's unit donations in the match? Were they intentional or just mistakes? I have a lot of insight on StarCraft, but I do not know that. Alright, let's give this another shot. Okay. Rocking the Sentry and Chimera portraits, respectively. And here we go. Same spots. In the lower right, we have the now. Wait. What am I looking at? Okay. We have the pink Protoss, and he is named Neutrophil. And his opponent. In the upper left, we have the orange Zerg. He is. How did we get the same map twice in a row? Because I'm running this show. That's how. Now I'm assuming we're going to get the same start here. Yes, we have a forge and we have a little Brood War probe. Coming out early, I'm sure, as they know each other very well, and they know this is a pretty early time to send a probe out. We are going to see how Dark Menace responds to this. I'm assuming there is a pylon and quite a few cannons that are going to be going down shortly. And there it is, okay. So, the pylon is not within range of the... Uh, of the hatcher of this building. Of course, you can't put it on the creep, but you can definitely put it there and it'll stay there once the creep spreads. Alright, we are getting a gateway, so... Not gonna be fully committed to this. So this is... Okay, a gateway and a cannon, so I think what we've got here is we've... You know, not got a standard cannon rush. We have... We have a proxy gateway and the units coming from here are going to be able to fall back to the cannons. Spawning pool is over three quarters complete. Another gateway back home. I am assuming that a cyber core will be following. Ooh, canceling the hatchery. We're going in full defense here. Let's see if there's a defensive structure going down. A lot of gas. Um, I mean, not just the not just the five that were briefly on that extractor, but we have double gas from Zerg. Oh, and there we go. Dark Menace with one of his classic hidden hatcheries. Spine Crawler is going down. No surprise there. No. Okay, we do have a Zealot on the way. Additional gateway. Now, this is going to be interesting. Not only can uh, Dark Menace safely mine from that hidden base, but he can also use that as a proxy himself. Send some Zerglins in without having to worry about them having to try to make it past those cannons. And here we go. Another pylon going down right in the natural. I am not sure if Neutrophil suspects that there is another hatchery out there. But at the very least, he knows the money's going somewhere. Spores, queens, oh wow. <laughs> Early lair. We are, we're getting next level here, and we've got roaches ready to come out too, and a ravager, very good for taking out cannons. Meanwhile, from, uh, meanwhile, from Neutrophil, we have a robotics facility, possibly to either support the push, with Immortals, or get around the defenses with some uh, Warp Prisms. Very rapid fire, and there's a lot of decisions to be made here. Two shield batteries over in uh, Dark Medicine's Natural. So far, he's only got, uh, yeah, one Roach... No, two... Wait, what am I looking at here? Units. Okay, there we go. Three Ravagers, one Roach. 
There we go. Biles coming down on the shield battery. Zealots and one stalker ready to do some damage, and they can keep falling back and recharging. Although there is no healing, only shields can be recharged. Down goes one of the shield batteries. Immortal is on the way. Infestation pit, so I don't know. Are we going to get swarm hosts? Or are we going to even move right on to a hive? And yep, yeah, this is very important. Down here, where there are no defenses, warp gate is only, only just completed, so these roaches are going to be able to depower some stuff here, so it may be now or never as far as Dark Menace goes. Or as far as uh, Neutrophil goes. He does have some good firepower. But yeah, over here... He, right now, he can only... He's only got two powered gateways, so at most... He can warp in two guys at a time. And yep! Swarm host, that's what the infestation pit was for. Ravagers pushing things back. Now keep in mind, shield batteries that are not near a nexus, not only can't they be overcharged, but also they start with less energy. And we are seeing... Oh, look at those zirklings. We are seeing both of them do numbers on each other's bases. Now these locusts, free units, but there's a long cooldown in between the times that they attack. They still do quite a bit of damage, though, and even if they're not within range of the units, they can they can work on depowering that pylon and thus all of the uh, shield batteries. Carnage over in the base of Neutrophil. Sentry coming in. We're gonna see what it can do. And what do we got now? I mean... Dark Menace has twice the workers. Neither of them do a ton of mining, though. And here we come. Swarm hosts uh, dropping locusts from high ground. <laughs> and we have the uh, probes that made it all the way over to here. Ready to rebuild pylons if necessary, I suppose. And we have a GG. Dark Menace takes the game with successful hidden counterattack and a successful defense on top of that. Alright, now, for our next map, we are going to be going to Altitude. More trash talking going behind the scenes. Yawn. This guy is going to cheese. That's why you explode first. Okay, yeah. And, um... Freedom's still in the game. He needs... Okay, there we go. So as I said, next map is going to be Altitude. Not a lot of chat during the matches, but boy, do these guys talk it up in between. <laughs> Statman is so loud. I guess that <laughs> I guess that means the starting screen is the co-op commander Statman one that people complained about so much back in the day when it was not something you could disable. And now they are arguing about which colors to take. Here, I'll just I'll just go ahead and uh, I'll just go ahead and show y'all. As you see, I am rocking the Thrall portrait from the Blizzard 30th anniversary. Well, our man KJ Freedom has the ultra rare and very heavily desired Canadian Marine from base. Is it base trade TV? Yeah, base trade TV. 
the one that they were not allowed to put the actual maple leaf on because, you know, rules. AC broken, that sounds awful. I got a fan in my room. But yes, they say they're ready. <laughs> so we will cut the chatter and we will get going. Big thing I'm practicing is remembering to uh, update the map, how many it's the best of, and who's scoring ahead of time. So sooner or later, just like uh, just like my first pile on other stuff, this will come more naturally. All right, in the upper right, we have. Our orange Zerg, and he is Dark Menace. And his opponent, a very cheesy purple Protoss, he is Neutrophil. Do the same thing, yep. You can always fight cheese with cheese. Oh man, and I have not been paying enough attention to Matheson. He has had a lot to say. Yeah, the hell it's about time base trade TV thing. I missed out on that completely, but I ended up uh, getting involved with a charity stream for uh, Minneapolis that Rifkin was doing, and when he heard that I was obsessed with unlocking cosmetics, he was able to actually find me one. So... Very grateful. And, oh boy. Alright, this time... Uh, this time we got the pylon right by the hatchery that's being built. Ah, uh, cancels it though. Okay, jump. I don't know what that means. No reapers in this match. But the, the probe is still lurking. Cybercore is going, so, I mean, behind all of this, uh, you know, feigning with pylons, he's building fairly normally. Probe's getting a look around. <laughs> and we have a worker fight. One that probes tend to have the advantage of, because if they get out of combat for just a little while... Their shields come back. Meanwhile, the Overlord is going to take a peek of its own. Oh, man. Yeah, we do need an FSL portrait. Uh, unfortunately, new content is few and far between, and the only stuff that really seems to ever surface are the, uh, the uh, ESL World Champion portraits that Nicholas Tessois, uh does for ESL. You know, he seem, you know, the, seems like Nicholas is the only source of content in either StarCraft game these days. Uh, in StarCraft Remastered, by the way, there are no longer seasonal portraits for the latter. Uh, but I digress. I do a lot of digressing. But uh, we do have adapts getting ready to take a look, maybe try to do some damage. Hmm. A zealot going. Not always the most usual thing you see early on before the upgrades are out. But, like I said, pretty standard. Zerglin speed is getting close to finish. We have a couple of Zerglins and a couple of uh, Adepts that are out now. And here we go. <laughs> One of them taking some damage, managed to shade out, and we have a Stargate on the side of Neutrophil. Uh, here we go. Adepts do not pack a lot of punch against uh, queens, against anything that isn't light, so that's really just to keep everyone's attention. The Zerglings, meanwhile, are seeing what they can get done on the other side. They can probably, if they focus down the hurt one, they can take it out pretty quickly and then surround the other. There we go. The shade is out, but I don't know. <laughs> now, of course, uh, Neutrophil is doing a good job bobbing and weaving that Adept around and look at two health left on that adapt. So might be of limited use later on. Neutrophil throwing down a shield battery just in case those Zerglings uh, move ahead. We have an Oracle on the way. 
ready to do some harassments. <laughs> what adept one zealot out to do protective duty for the Nexus. And yep, yeah, as I expected, they're just a squeeze between there to uh, limit surface area. Very effective, especially from adepts versus certainings. Ooh. Let's see, oh. Oh man, they managed to they managed to draw out a early uh, pulsar beam, is it? From the Oracle, so more than wait, more than spending energy, that forced neutrophil to tip his hand, so Dark Metis knows what's coming over here. Hmm. No uh interestingly though, no sport crawlers yet. We do have five queens. That covers quite a bit. Oh, and we have a real phoenix, not a hallucinated one, going after the going overlord hunting. Have up, have a banelin nest on the way. Hydralisks and hydralisk upgrades, and we have queens just kind of picking at this poor oracle, and it does not escape. We're going to Hydralis attack. Neutrophil Dark Menace is supply blocked because of that Phoenix and the Overlord hunting. Neutrophil ahead and workers, both about even as far as army goes. Now we might be able to even that out now that uh, now that Dark Menace is no longer supply blocked. We have Templar Archives on the way, charge, and an adept that uh, got taken out by some Hydralisks. Right now, both of them on three bases. Two, uh, two phoenixes just going around, mostly just overlord hunting. I don't think that's a very committed amount. I believe gateway units are the big deal here. Right now we have five warp gates. Yeah, I think Zealots are very much the focus here, and as suspected, we have a Lurker Den coming up. And I say one thing, uh, one thing that concerns me, I don't see a lot of defenses for Dark Menace in the Mineral Lines. Uh, no defensive structures, the uh, army units kind of more on an intercept place rather than defending the workers. So potentially with a drop or some air harass, there could be a lot that gets done. First couple, uh, his first attack and uh, armor upgrade almost done for Dark Menace. What do we have here? We have a zealot just looking around. Yo, bro, I didn't see the charge. I thought he was super fast. That's right, zealot's known for being super fast on creep. I figured these guys probably had room to chat a little bit more uh, in-game. Got an observer there, so the Zealot is able to take out some tumors, but really, I mean, it's not really getting much scouting done or much damage, so I mean, granted it's only 100 minerals. Gateways. Plenty of warp gates here. Full-on gateway explosion, and Psionic Storm is also done, so... You know, they haven't really engaged each other full on yet. Aside from a little bit of overlord hunting, a little adept hunting. But I think, at the very least, these zerglings are set to do some actual damage. Not very committed, though. And the zealots are chasing them away. Got some banelins. An infestation pet is coming up. <laughs> I don't know. Just get a lot of singular zealots who want to clear a lot of creep. Also, I gotta say, the uh, observer here 
might pay for it to move around a bit. I don't think there's any detection on the side of uh, on the side of Dark Menace. But here, yeah, I mean, look at that. Neutrophil does not have a lot of information on what he's up against. Whereas Neutrophil, yeah, he he's seen a lot of this. And here we go, Changelands. He's going to get even more information now. Neutrophil almost to plus one, plus one to uh, put him on par with his opponent. Real zealots kill the fake zealots. They do not take kindly to being impersonated. Yeah, it's interesting. Oh, okay, here is a real move out. At least I think it's a real move out. He might be taking the gold. Oh. Warp Prism, though. And yeah, these changelings are going to at least get some hints that there's something coming that way. We got seven lurkers on the other side. Five Archon, three Immortals. Yeah, I think this is going to re be a real attack. He's going to be reinforcing this with the Warp Prism. And he has the Psionic Storms ready to go. Oop. You hear those Lurker Spines. That's your cue to fall back at least a little bit. And I don't think... I don't think he's got detection with him. I think the detection's over in another spot right now. Well, here we go. Damage is being done. Here come the Zerglings. Lurker is surrounded. Everyone is boxed in the corner, and he's going for the recall. The Protoss undo. In the end, uh, I mean, he killed, what, four workers? Oh, but I didn't even notice this. There was a zealot run by that completely decimated this hatchery. So maybe that wasn't all for naught, although... I mean, I gotta say, Dark Menace definitely has a supply lead going right now. Both in workers and an army. That can be uh, that can be doubly bad. Also, I mean, he really lost some techiness there. I don't think there were any. I don't think there were many lurkers lost there, but archons and immortals went down. And this uh, positioning is going to be everything here, but this could really hurt. Sonic Storm goes down, doesn't get much. Get some Hydralis, at least. What do we got here? Alright. I think Neutrophil holds. Oop. <laughs> Doesn't quite have detection far enough out there. Alright. Evens things out a little bit. Neutrophil actually has this ply lead now. I don't think any workers went down there. So... In the end, not bad. And once again, during all of this, Neutrophil with one of his brutal zealot run buys, but this time there's lurkers ready to defend. And certainly it's ready to chase. Dark Menace at 2 2, Neutrophil still at 1 1, but almost caught up with the upgrades again. Dark Menace with the, with the worker lead. Neutrophil starting to starting to get the this would be the fifth base up. And Neutrophil also not bad as far as the creep spread goes. A little over halfway across the map. There we go. Another Oracle coming up. The Hive level upgrades. Don't see any Vipers. But those Lurkers uh, I believe are can they have their full upgrades? Oh. Dark Menace, meanwhile. I think I disable your base is under attack thing. Okay. Hmm. I don't know if he accidentally turned uh, some of the notifications off while he was trying to turn off the Stepman sound effects or something. I don't know. Well, here we go. This is what the upcoming patch is all about. Stopping these guys from destroying everything too quickly. In the end, 
Only two workers go down. Manages to take out a little bit, a little bit of pylon. You're so broke, you don't even have any work. No, no, he retreated them. You know this guy better than that. All right, might need to might need to step off the talking. Neutrophil's army is being surrounded with some wonderful storms there. Get a job? I don't know. Okay. Oh, because he's broke. Okay. So what do we got? It's okay. Some lurkers, some other good units going down. Right now, Neutrophil starting to secure a supply lead. He is 86 army supply versus 52. Dark Menace hurrying some more guys out there, including some more Banelands. And these zealots do an excellent job getting in the way of the tech units here. And meanwhile, back home, there are actually a couple of carriers in production. I've seen Neutrophil do this sort of thing before. Just throw some capital ships in for good measure. But with 14 drones going down, this is uh, this is looking good for him. I mean, he's not running away with it, but that's uh, definitely got some good damage. The whole hatchery there erased. 16 drones. And here we go. <laughs> Ooh, classic battle, Zerglings versus Immortals. Zerglings actually do pretty well in that. We have to see. Uh, a lot of Hydralis in production, so... Here, let me see. The, uh... Dark Menace does not know that there's a fleet beacon, but he seems to have an inkling. I'm, honestly, it's hard to tell. The uh, Hydras... Yeah, he's, he is keeping Hydras on the field, so I don't think those guys are just to turn into Lurkers. But they might be pretty important once the carriers start showing up. Here we go, Protoss army, venturing on to creep again, and clearing out the tumors as it goes. Yep. I mean, got defense of the natural, but not this uh, other base as much. Storming in the choke point ramp and putting more and more down. Those are very tough against the Hydralisks. Still, oh boy, that was a lot of Banelian explosions there. And I would say Dark Menace got the better of that overall. This is delightfully back and forth. Dark Menace now with another slight supply lead, but so much of the game, these guys are neck and neck. One of them punches, then the other punches back, then the other punches back again. Oh, look at this. Zerglin sneak in, depower some couple of the gateways, and a cyber core, although I don't think there was not. I guess they're, yeah, they actually, that actually does put one of the upgrades on pause. Back here, all right, they're the, they're the carriers. They're doing a pretty good job, along with the Archons and Zealots. But still, more more Zerglings, more Speedlings, Speedlings, Cracklings, whatever, going into the natural and the main now. The rest of the army heads back home, but 22 probes have died. And these carriers, well, they, they can clean up Zerglings pretty quickly as long as they can stay with them. However, the Fleet Beacon goes down, so he's going to have to replace that right away. That is not a cheap structure, or one that warps in quickly. So he might have to wait a little bit before the next round of carriers. Still, the Spire is only halfway done on the other side of the map. Oh, where is it hiding? Here. Okay. Spire, Spire. There's the Spire. And once again, just like every previous moment in this match, after getting hit, Neutrophil does not wait long to hit back. Granted, the ground army certainly can move a lot faster than the carriers. Pretty soon, we're going to see a lot of Corruptors coming out. I guarantee that. Well, here we are. Setting up to just decimate another hatchery. And this has been, this has been one of the big stories. I mean... 
Dark Menace has definitely taken down a lot of pylons, but Neutrophil has taken down a lot of hatcheries. 3-3 three, three upgrades for the... for the Protoss ground. 3-3 three, three upgrades for the Zerg melee, and 1-3 for the range Zerg. Neither of them with any upgrades for their area units, even development. Although, uh, shield bat shields are being upgraded. And those count towards the flying units, as well as the structures and the ground units. And where was that? Is that... Okay, Dark Templar. Uh, yeah, here's here's where it goes. I mean, yeah, still not a single defensive structure from Dark Menace. So that's going to leave those mineral lines pretty vulnerable to uh, not just Zealot run buys, but also Dark Menace against Dark Templar against Dark Menace. And whoa, I meant to watch this, but uh, he did indeed smash the Zelnaga Watchtower clean up the rocks, and then he's working on getting a nexus up in this place, but these expansions are, just like any gold expansion, very difficult to defend. There is such a big angle you can tack it from, including from behind it, from the low ground if you got vision. A couple of void rays coming out to uh, counter the corruptors that he knows are going to be coming. Oh, God. It's kind of interesting. 56 workers to 58 workers. I mean, that's that's not huge economy from either of them. Some of that has to do with uh, a lot of the worker deaths. But... That's right. No, don't don't you let that Dark Templar get away. Here we go. Kind of a face-off here with the gold base right in between the armies. I wouldn't be surprised if both of them continue to send some run buys around too. Yeah, you see right here. Right here we got the Rolly boys. Oh. And I think I think this is intentional. I think Neutrophil is just getting rid of some of his stalkers. Or well. Maybe. Oh once again, <laughs> Neutrophil is very wise these Banlin run buys. Only two workers going down. Got, yep. Once again, as suspected. Zerton is running by. And, yeah, with all those upgrades, they do very rapid damage. So even though they don't stand a chance against the army, they got the castle without any trouble at all. Plus one air weapons on the way for both sides. Uh, you know, this might be a bit of classic uh, ZVP late game. I think there's going to be a lot of air support here. And a lot of this is going to come down to some very heavy sieging. Alright. We... The Lurkers burrow. They're probably... Okay. Air units coming in there. I think he wants to save the storms for the Corruptors. Good old Tempest. And here we go. Corruptors venture forward. They just kind of jab a little bit and then pat, fly back. Yes. And this is a pretty good game. They are very well matched. And they are both using very similar tactics. There go the Sonic Storms. Focus them heavily on the Hydralis and the Corruptors. Still falling back. Uh... Not quite within range of the shield batteries, unfortunately, but those storms are very much doing the trick. Lurkers go down, but he's got detection, and those lurkers do not do anything against the Voidress or the carriers. However, despite Neutrophil winning the battle, supplies are still neck to neck. Neck in neck? Neck at neck? I don't know, but 13 workers also died. Although at this point, you know, I can just transfer the workers around. There we go, testing things out. Archons, about half shield. How many? We've only got two carriers and one Tempest, but these Void Rays are kind of nice themselves. Still, I think uh, Neutrophil's probably going to be focusing a little bit more heavily on ground with all those Corruptors and Hydralis around. There we go, more Stalkers. 
NT little bro, NT little bro, I don't know what that means. I'm assuming it's a typo. Alright. Yeah, those Hydras and Corruptors are going to do pretty well against the Arianists overall. And Neutrophil starting to fall behind in armies. Well, I guess the supply all around. Oh, MT, nice try. Nice try, little bro. You see, I'm, uh, I keep, I, I, I understand the kid lingo. I do. <laughs> I could tell them a lot about Windows MT, which was probably around before they were born. Yeah, I, I got, I got there. I got there. Nice try, yep. <laughs> there we go. Corruptor's poking ahead. Now, one of the big things is Dark Menace is going to have to be careful not to go too heavy on the Corruptor as in case of a ground switch. It's very delicate. He's got to keep an eye on what his opponent's doing. And look at this. 43 workers, 41 workers. Dark Menace has plenty of gas in the bank, but yeah, this has been... I mean, despite them expanding, you know, taking half the map each, kind of a strangely low econ uh, <laughs> matchup, really. Bro, what is that pylon wall? I'll tell you what it is. It's shiny. You know, sometimes, sometimes in StarCraft, before the executor says you must construct additional pylons, you have to be ready to say, uh, Dude, no, I don't. Back to it, though. We have another clash ready to go. Now, it's been it's been interesting. So many of these clashes have been more or less even, or have been evened out right afterward with the, with the counterattack. These Archons doing some pretty good work, and the Void Rays doing what they can to take down those corruptors. But there's a little too many of them. Storm on the Hydras doesn't quite uh, doesn't quite hit them as hard as it might. Zealot reinforcements coming in. There is no uh, warp prism out here, so it's going to have to rely on that pylon back by the Nexus. But because it's next to a Nexus, it's still fast warping. He does drive the corruptors and the Hydralists back. The corruptors don't do anything against ground units. However, classic combo of Zergly and Hydralisk. And big thing he's going to want to do is keep stepping back. He does not want to get himself surrounded to where he can't move. Neutrophil, 21 behind as far as supply count goes. And here's the big thing. Uh, Neutrophil does not have the gas bank that Dark Menace does. So even though he's got all of this uh, air attack, all this Golden Armada attack, I don't think he's got the uh, gas economy to support it. More and more lings coming up. Don't need any gas for those, and they tend to pay for themselves. Stalkers are falling back. They did get a nice little snipe on the hatchery, but he needs to reserve these units. He does not want to fall further behind. Here come the zealots. This is very, very MOBA minion. Very, very much falling back to the reinforcements over and over. <laughs> And all along this path, despite them having both utilized a lot of run buys so far, none of those going on now. It's just, I'm going to reinforce my army, push forward. Other guy reinforces his army, pushes forward. Back and forth, back and forth. Tug of war. But I gotta say, each time it feels like Dark Menace is getting a little bit closer to Neutrophil's expansion than the other way around. And he just keeps adding more of these... Uh, more of these Zerglings, including some. I don't know if he might need to cancel those Bailing Morphs. Maybe not. Storm's always very handy to have. And check this out. There just isn't a lot of production going on. Because at this point, bro. Now these guys, are, are they brothers? I have trouble keeping track. Are they brothers or just bros? All right, well, even if you've got detection, lurkers are pretty uh, pretty effective if you don't have a really big army. And yeah, that beautiful pylon wall again. What's your supply? Hey, you don't need to tell them anything. <laughs> An 
and I ain't talking. I'm I'm just the referee. You first. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Same time. Three, two. Uh, now I got some control to do, and yet another hatchery snipe. <laughs> Covers retreat and electricity. And yeah, this this is that point where the even though you see the supply can be a little bit deceptive. Those corruptors, there's not a lot of them to shoot at. I guess there's the couple of void rays. <laughs> oh no! If you can't trust your opponent, who can you trust? But yeah, these corruptors, there's a limit to their usefulness. Oh, and look at. Up uh, the probes, the probe stalker combo, and they actually do get a cancel. But those corruptors, uh, unless they go and start spitting on some buildings, there's only so much they're going to be able to help with. Once again, Neutrophil looks like he's getting ready to destroy the Zelnaga Watchtower by collapsing the cooling tower on top of it, and then maybe clearing out the debris. I don't know. <laughs> Steps out, turns around when he hears those lurker spots. We are at 31 minutes into this game. <laughs> Quite a game between D and N. D and N. Oh, Dark Menace and Neutrophil. See, I caught on with that too. <laughs> Alright, he does take down a lurker. I would venture to say he's going to take out that hatchery again. He does. And there they go, Zerglings and Corruptors and Lurkers coming in, more storms being laid behind, covering the retreats. And, yeah, Dark Menace just can't afford to keep losing the stuff, and look at this Dark Templar taking out another hatchery. This is going to take more and more of a toll on Dark Menace. Replacing these hatcheries and replacing workers, that's money he doesn't get to spend on his army, and... He doesn't have a ton of money. Both of them a little bit gas-starved. About 400 minerals in the bank for each. Dark Templar decides to leave. Yeah, very much the Overseer on the way. Blink being researched. That's interesting. And a couple more Immortals come in, too. And I guess during the interview, maybe we can ask Neutrophil what was with that pylon wall. I've had that used against me, um, but I think that was more back in the Brood War days. And pylons were a lot uh, sturdier back in Brood War. Neutrophil with the supply lead leading. Oh, look at that. The cooling tower was collapsed, and it's Dark Menace who decides to clear it up. <laughs> and there we go. There's. Oh! Yep! Had a. Uh, had an overseer in, what, siege mode, stationary mode, whatever you want to call it. Sweet, we might get a game three between these two players. I think we might. I don't think we're getting a team match tonight. Uh, I need to double check on that. Yep. Those upgraded uh, lurkers, great for zoning. You know, a lot of the time in the, you know, PvZ late game, you can end up with a match where neither army can really take each other head on. Oh, and look at that. Hatchery goes down from a zealot run by. That overseer doesn't help at all against that. But you think about, like, late game PvZ, you think kind of a stalemate where, where neither side can really take each other on head on. And so they're both just kind of maneuvering around, trying to get the better position. No, this is uh, this is them butting heads over and over and over while the run buys continue. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Storm, 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 storm. And the GG. Neutrophil evens the score. And we are indeed going to uh, match number three, or map number three, round number three. We're going to something with a three behind it, all right?
And what do we got? What do we got? Map 3 will be on Royal Blood. Now, first game was a heavy duty cheese. Second game was pretty drawn out. I don't know. Usually, after a game that goes past the 30 minute mark, I usually assume that one or both players are going to try something cheesy so they don't have to keep dragging things along. We shall see. Oh, Matheson's hitting us with poetry again. What was the most thrilling moment for you during the match between Dark Menace and Neutrophil? I liked those storms at the very end. I love Psionic Storm. Always have. <laughs> Alright. Everybody's ready. We are on the decider. Royal Blood. Oh yes, there will be blood. There will be royal blood. Uh, wait, what? Didn't actually catch what happened there. Um, wait, okay. Alright, well, another remake, I guess? Um, I think I can just do play again. Yep, got the same uh, add ins. T E R Sean what? <laughs> Can't be up too late, yeah. That's fine, we can do uh All right, let's give this another shot. The game didn't count math. Oh, yeah, Matheson doesn't understand remakes, huh? All right, in the upper right, we have the orange Protoss, he is Neutrophil, and his opponent again, in the lower left, we have the pink Zerg, he is Dark Menace. Part of Minnesota Barcraft Group? Uh, you should check out our Discord. We do have one. And we actually play team games pretty regularly. Uh, also, check out our Facebook page, MN Barcraft. I do a lot of blogging there. And also, we've even been doing some uh, Barcraft LAN parties over at the Mall of America. We've been partnering with Wisdom Gaming. So there is my pitch. But yeah, absolutely. Uh, we do stuff, so just check us out. We've got the new clan tag. I, I think it was just set as a group before.
All right. So normal start. I'm not smelling cheese yet. Yes, I I'm hyper turtle. I was indeed there. Uh, so along with you know that was that was a good event. I mean, wasn't a huge turnout, but Rushy was there. A couple of other regulars were too. But yeah, I also go as DJ on the meetup page. But yeah, there's nothing like actually having some in-person stuff going, even if it's just a handful of people. Hmm. Um. Waiting on. Uh, okay, yeah. Just waiting for the queens. Uh, I'm I'm not sure if Mall of America is still the largest in the United States. It was never the largest in the world, I don't think. But it's pretty big, and they've even expanded a tiny bit. My daughter uh, and I have uh, annual memberships to Crayola Experience, and uh, and Sea Life. Yeah. Neat place. In Minnesota, you know, you can be a victim to the weather, but the Mall of America, there's a lot to do indoors. There we go. One Zerglin goes down. Where's that shade? Oh, it cancels it anyway, so... Yeah, well, we'll be doing more. We'll also likely be doing a traditional Barcraft to watch uh, the DreamHack Atlanta deal, the SC2 Masters winner. They've been, you know, I gotta say, ESL has been doing a wonderful, they've had a wonderful commitment to making sure that the events, at least the semifinals and finals, have been more North America friendly. Okay, meanwhile though, the Adapts Escape got some injuries, but they're doing a great job taking the Zerglins out just a few at a time. Oh, but one of the Adapts does indeed go down. Here we go with the creep. Neutrophil again, focus on air. Oh, though he's got a robo as well, so he's covering the tech paths. Two phoenixes ready to go. Third one on the way. Yeah, so yeah, neutrophil already getting the tech stru all the tech structures down. Twilight Council almost done. Robotics facility almost done. And of course, phoenixes looking to see if there's some free overlords to take out. Hey, wait! I think he's speaking up in defense of that. Uh, he did not wait. That overlord died. Here we go. He's adding more phoenixes, so this time he seems a lot more dedicated. So, I don't think it's going to be long before we're going to see those flying right over the mineral lens. And yeah, we do have zerglins uh, taking down some destructible rocks, making a shortcut. Royal Blood, there's a whole straight line you can take down the middle if you take the time to destroy a lot of rocks. And there we go. Taking on the Queen, I think... Will he be... I don't think he has the energy to transfuse it. He does not. It goes down. Poor lady. Alright, not a bad catch. We got Adepts and Zealots. And yeah, these should be more than a match for the Zerglins, especially if they stand between the pylon and the uh, and the Nexus. And yes, the stream elements said, Psystorm does indeed have a Patreon page. And along with being able to support these events like FSL, there's also more ways you can get involved in them too. Involved in decision making, involved in some behind the scenes stuff. 
And we have uh, subscriptions as low as $3 a month. Charge almost done. And yeah, those Zerglin's not the best at chewing through rocks, but they get there eventually. Archon's on the way, Warp Prism being made. So Neutrophil is very much gearing up to do some damage. In the meantime, though, yeah, Hydralisks are pretty effective against Phoenixes. I think the Phoenixes are more going to be support here, and honestly, the Hydralisks aren't going to do quite as well against the Zealot Archon combo. <laughs> but yep, just like last match, we have. Uh, we have some Zerglins getting ready. Oh, I guess this isn't even just a run by. We have both armies going different directions here. However, there is a Zergling that's been keeping an eye on Neutrophil's army. Joined by more friends. And yeah, I think uh, I think Dark Menace is going to try to take this invading force head on. He does have a good composition for it, too, between the Hydras and the Banes and Zerglins. Does not chase them up to high ground, though. Proceeding cautiously, he does not want to lose too much. Sonic Storm only just starting, but Banelin speed almost completed. So far, the only attacker armor upgrade is plus one attack for the Protoss. So here we go. We are very much in Neutrophil's territory right now. Dark Menace picking away at the warp gate. And he's got an excellent concave if Neutrophil does try to attack. He also has the option to just run a bunch of those Zerglings and Banelins right in there. This is a point where he can use the wall against his opponents. There we go. Zerglings and Hydralis just testing things out. And for those who don't follow this much, these are a couple of our younger players, although they are they are top skill. They're in our code S plus group. All right, we have damage going down. The Zerglins, the Hydralisks, actually getting quite a bit done. We're gonna see where this attack force holds up. They are getting the advantage. Another Archon goes down, Warp Prism goes down. That Immortal looking, oh, just barely survived so far, but it's very vulnerable. Zealots are coming in, but this ranch attack is going to hold them at bay. And I think these Stalkers and this Immortal, they're very vulnerable. We just have a lot of Zealots coming in at the high ground, but as long as Dark Menace takes advantage of that choke point, it's going to limit the effectiveness quite a bit. One Zealot going down after another, down to half supply, and Dark Menace is the winner of this heavily contested and very even round. So we're going to get both of them in for an interview. Uh, this is going to be our only match tonight, but we'll be doing more of a full set on Friday. Alright, Dark Menace, Neutrophil. That was quite the series. We had map one where some heavy-duty cheese that got uh, ended up getting defended and bypassed for the counterattack. Then we had a very intense, very long back and forth between all the tech units until you both were pretty resource starved. And then finally, you know, we had something a bit more similar to the second match, except not as high tech, just uh, Zerg managing to push in, hold their position, and eventually take the victory. Dark Menace, how you feeling? Well... I felt better in the last game because, like, I barely got supply block, but, like, the second game especially, I just got supply block a lot, and, like, I, I think you've got, I think you've got something playing in the background. Nope. Let's see, do I have that playing? Nope. Okay. All right, go on. Yeah, the second one, that dragged down a bit. One thing I definitely noticed, Dark Menace, is you don't seem to be a big fan of defensive structures. I didn't see any Spore Crawlers or Spine Crawlers, um, uh, except in that sorry, first I, game I with the Rush. I didn't catch that because my earbuds fell out. Oh. repeat the last sentence. All right. I noticed you built some uh, Spine Crawlers in the first game when you were defending the Rush, but I don't think there was a single Spine Crawler or a Spore Crawler built in the second or third match. They... They don't really suit your taste? Uh, 
I actually did make a couple, but okay. At the end, I really just like didn't think it was that important because I was trying to focus on making army. Yeah, I'd say both of you in all those games managed to get some really brutal run buys going, definitely. And Neutrophil, you were able to take down that second game. That was an interesting one because you were making your way into air, and then between the corruptors and the lack of resources, um, you were able to really leverage the advantage of those ground units, especially against the corruptors. How was how were things going there? Honestly, that was just improvisation. Like yeah, when I sure. saw he had a ton of corruptors. I just tried to win the ground battle. Indeed, and then he ended up with some useful supply to go there. Back you, yeah. Mm -hmm. And first map, very ambitious with the not not just a uh, not just a cannon rush, but uh, basically proxy gateway defended by cannons. Do you do that one much? I usually pull it out against um, Dark Menace in our matches. So oh, really? I, I usually don't do it game one, but um, yeah, he, he defended it very differently this time. So yeah, I'll just how I make that just how well do the two of you know each other? You were definitely getting the small talk going. Mm -hmm. Bro this, things. bro that. Yeah. Okay. Well, I thought those were very entertaining. The second match, especially, that was one of you, just two of you taking turns, hitting each other right in the face. Uh, just always, over and over, able to do as much damage as received. But in the end, I'd say those uh, all those hatchery snipes were the were what made the difference there. All right. Any uh, any words to say to your opponent before we wrap up for the night? Uh, no. GG's. GG. I'll be sure in the playoffs. Oh yeah. Uh, like the usual. I mean. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, you okay. both showed you were able to draw blood, so I look forward to the two of you crossing paths again. All right, we will see you, and we will okay. be calling it a night. Okay. Here. Jeez. All right, everyone. Thank you to everyone who tuned in. I had a lot of fun with those matches. We've been using Wednesdays for show matches or just matches that are more tricky to schedule. But Friday, we will be going all out. We have a bunch of matches scheduled there, not just one-on-one, -on -one, but also some 2v2 matches as well. Multiple skill levels, and I am looking forward to it. I hope to see everyone there. Whether, uh, you know... On behalf of Psystorm Gaming, on behalf of Minnesota Barcraft, and Taro Adun.